Hi everyone, my name is Christian Palomares. I'm an applications engineer here at Microchip Technology. This is the first video of a multi-part series of technical concepts on photodiodes, ranging from simple concepts such as photodiode background theory to more advanced topics such as how to design a photodiode amplifier circuit, how to simulate the design on MPLAB MINDI, the noise analysis of the circuit, and a reference design. So what is light sensing and how do we measure it? To measure light, we require a photodiode and a trans impedance amplifier. The photodiode converts light into a current, and then the trans impedance amplifier boosts that signal to the right voltage level. Now, depending on the application, the type of requirements of the trans impedance amplifier changes. Some of those light sensing applications include optical communications, self driving vehicles, pulse oximeters, and chemical analysis devices, just to name a few. All of these applications require pulses of light, and photodiodes are one of the most reliable and cost-effective photodetectors. So what is a photodiode? A photodiode is a semiconductor device with a PN junction that converts photons, or light, into an electrical current. Some of the photodiode features consist of a wide spectral response, excellent linearity and stability, low noise, small physical size, and long lifetime. Let's look at an equivalent circuit of a photodiode. To understand the real-life functionality of this device, this circuit model is a very helpful analytical tool. Because just inserting a photodiode symbol into a schematic doesn't tell you how much the signal will be generated or how much the photodiode will interact with the amplifier circuit. An equivalent circuit can be represented by a current source, a junction shunt resistance, a junction capacitance, a series resistance, in addition to the normal PN junction represented by the diode symbol. The ideal current source represents the photocurrent, for example, the current generated by the diode in response to incident light. Note that the direction of the photocurrent corresponds to the current that flows from the diode's cathode to the diode's anode. The shunt resistance represents the resistance of the zero bias photodiode junction. The junction capacitance is directly proportional to the junction area and is inversely proportional to the diode reverse bias voltage. This junction capacitance is an important parameter because it strongly influences the photodiode's frequency response. There are two operation modes for the photodiode, the photovoltaic mode and the photoconductor mode. These two implementations have their own strengths and weaknesses, and the mode selection is dependent on the target application. For the photovoltaic mode, this has zero voltage potential across the photodiode. No dark current flows through the photodiode, the linearity and sensitivity are maximized, and the noise level is relatively low, which makes it well suited for precision applications. For the photoconductive mode, this has a reverse bias voltage placed across the photodiode. The reverse bias voltage reduces the diode junction capacitance and it shortens the response time. Therefore, the photoconductive mode is suitable for high-speed applications such as high-speed digital communications. To better understand the working modes of the photodiode, we must consider the current versus voltage characteristics. The chart shown on the screen consists of four areas, called quadrants. This graph shows what happens when an external voltage is applied across the photodiode. For example, when the voltage is positive, the current increases exponentially. This state is also known as forward bias mode. And when the voltage is negative, this is known as a reverse bias mode. So now, let's look at the waveforms in the different quadrants. The third quadrant shows the usage of the photodiode as a photodetector, for example, a light sensor, which is the photoconductive mode. However, in the fourth quadrant, the photodiode works as a light radiation converter, or photovoltaic mode, which is the basis for solar cells. On this chart, P0 to P4 shows the current at different light levels, where P0 represents the photodiode with no light on it, so it is not generating any current and the curve looks like a standard diode. But even though there's no light, there is a small leakage current that flows through the photodiode under reverse bias conditions. This is called dark current. Now, when the light strikes the photodiode, P1 to P4 shows the results at four different light levels. The curve at P1 shifts to P2, and increasing the amount of light, it will shift the curve to position P3, and so on. All of this in parallel with respect of light intensity. In these cases, the diode is generating a current which appears to be a negative value because it is coming out of the diode and not going into it. Another benefit of reverse bias operation is the linear output of the photodiode with respects of illumination, represented by the straight line right here. 
This simply means that the voltage current changed linearity directly proportional with increasing optical power. Now, right next to the reverse bias section, we have the breakdown voltage highlighted in purple. In this area, the photodiode should not be operated beyond the breakdown voltage. This will damage the component. On the other hand, the nonlinearity of the forward bias section can also be seen in green. As the forward bias increases, the regular diode current increases exponentially, consuming the negative photocurrent and making the external current become positive when the bias voltage is high enough. So now that we completed this brief overview on photodiode theory, let's move on to the next video that focuses on how to design a photodiode amplifier circuit and where several key design points are going to be discussed in order to improve the circuit's performance.